Now don't blink because this build does millions of damage. Veruna on release was a Warframe that had a few minor issues. It was good, don't get me wrong, but after some reviews, feedback and hotfixes over time, she has synergized her kit with much needed amendments and has even a cheeky augment to top it all off. And boy, the results are speaking for themselves. Alrighty then, as always, timestamps are added beneath the video. Let's start off with her abilities and what you need to know. Passive. Veruna has four passives that are tied to each of her abilities. To activate each passive, you'll want to hold the ability button down and it will cast the passive in that slot. For her first, she gets Parkour Velocity. For her second, she gets Status Immunity. For her third, she'll benefit from Heavy Attack Efficiency. And from her fourth, she gains an extra life. So instead of dying, you consume this active passive and it goes in a 60 second cooldown. These passives are unique to her playstyle and I find myself switching between them depending on the next situation that I face. Most of the time, I like the Status Immunity or the Parkour as they're both great quality of life. But if I'm ever just messing about and I want a safer reassurance, I'll pop on and have fourth and have a backup life in case I'm not paying attention. Faruna's first ability is Shroud of Dina. Now Shroud of Dina gives Faruna invisibility, movement speed, and an increase to critical chance, critical damage, and status chance with a guaranteed slash status effect per hit. Shroud of Dina's invisibility will break after your next hit with weapons. However, Faruna's abilities do not break this Shroud. So this will be your go-to survival tool. Try not to break the Shroud and reap the reward it benefits for you. Runa's second ability is Fangs of Raksh. Leaping towards a target, apply five random status elements on them. If the target is killed with the elements still remaining on them, it will spread onto nearby enemies and that scales with range. So I do like this ability, but the only downside that it has to it would be the RNG elements that it applies. Some are stronger than others and some aren't that useful, but either way, it's still good. But if I was to subsume an ability off of her, this would be the one that I would subsume off. And if you did want to go ahead and bring anything into her kit from the Helminth, there isn't much that synergizes with the Ulfren's Descent that doesn't interrupt the gameplay loop. Now there is a reason for this, and I will add it to my video description because it's quite long to talk about. So as for a different ability, I would infuse your Relly's Aqua Blaze as they have high duration and deal slash which complements and fits the build without much interruption. Veruna's third ability is Lycus Hunt. When active, killing enemies with melee attacks make them drop health orbs, and killing enemies with headshots make them drop energy orbs. Now, Lycus Hunt can be extended passively if you kill enemies that are affected by five or more status elements on them. Now, Lycus Hunt is a great ability, and this allows us to really punish our build with less efficiency, but have little to no issues with efficiency due to synergizing this ability with high kill output and adding in the combination of Prime Flow, Equilibrium, and Arcane Energize. This will solve any energy issues that you face during combat. So finally, we have Faruna's fourth ability, and this is called Ulfren's Descent. Now, this will be the main one that we're focusing for this build. Faruna drops at all fours and has five lunge attacks, which deal massive slash damage and some AoE around the target. Each kill adds a combo to her ability, dealing more damage for each stack up to a maximum of 10 stacks. So we will be using her Augment here, which gives us the best quality of life that we could have hoped for. Now, if an enemy dies to Ulfren's Slash, they will reset her five charges replenishing them and helping you remain at that 10 stack for that extra bonus damage that she benefits from. This augment is absolutely key to this build so make sure that you grab it. Speaking of builds, what about that build then? All right, so really quick, I have two builds for her but both play relatively the same. Up first is a non-subsumable build. This is just raw Faruna at her best. First up, we're going to be focusing strength as pretty much most of her kit scales off this value, making her stronger and providing bigger buffs. Up next, duration is important, providing quality of life to our Shroud of Diner ability, keeping you safer due to that invisibility protection. From there, for this build, I want to push Fangs of Raksh to have a little more range to help the status elemental spread on kills. Now, I would emphasize that I personally think 145% range that I have here isn't quite enough to make that much of an impact to feel a difference in comparison to 100% range. So it's your call if you wish to spend this mod slot on other values provided. However, I was just doing some testing. As mentioned earlier, although efficiency is low, the only trouble that you will face is right at the beginning of a mission. I recommend either killing a couple of enemies to get you rolling, or either large energy pads, Xenuric Focus School, or a companion like Sahasa's Dig if you need to go and get the ball rolling. But from here onwards, you shouldn't really struggle with energy once Lycos Hunt is active. Now just get killing. The second build that I went with was a subsumable one. And I echo again, please guys, if you get the time to read the video's description, because it's a long list of why so many other Helmet abilities currently 
do not work in synergy with Old Friend's Descent, please go and take your time to read that. So we've popped in Aqua Blaze from Ureli. Now the reason for this was twofold. Number one, it has really high base duration at 45 seconds, which is fantastic and not interruptible to Varuna's gameplay loop. So do take note that Varuna cannot cast Helmet abilities whilst in her Old Friend's Descent ability. So the higher base duration for us, the better that it is. And then number two, this ability does slash damage. Now, the slash itself, in my opinion, is nice, but literally any element is better than no element. Because you see, Verona's fourth ability deals 100% increased bonus damage to a target already affected by a status element. Well, Aqua Blades, even during a lunge, will hit an enemy before Verona will. So this is great quality of life to increase your damage and not be disruptive to your playstyle. And as for the build on the screen, it's extremely similar to the first one that I showed. However, I don't really like to go range on this one because it's not needed. So then, what are those ability rotations? Now, if you have energy available, this is what I would do. Start off by leading with with either your Shroud of Diner ability or your Lycos Hunt ability. Ask yourself a question, do you need survival first or do you want to go and get energy return first? You choose. Next, cast the other one that you didn't cast. So either one free or free one. Now that you got the ball rolling, this now depends on which build you took. So if you took a subsumable build, you would cast your second ability, the subsumable ability here, because you cannot do it during her fourth. So it has to be in that order. However, if you didn't take a subsumable ability, then cast her fourth ability, Orphan's Descent first, so that you're already prepared and good to go. Now you can go and cast your Fangs of Raksh and begin building up your combo stacks and do millions of damage. Runa is absolutely no joke when it comes to DPS output. The highest single hit that I managed to record was around 17 million. But to imagine, that's just a hit, guys. The bleed procs I was seeing on Exodus units could range up to 7 million damage per tick for 6 ticks. That's 42 million damage in just bleeds. That's ludicrous. Also to note, Varuna can even two-shot Steel Path Acolytes like a butter. They are absolutely no problem to you, but only if they nullify you. Then yeah, they're annoying. But get yourself out of trouble, recloak whenever you can, and rebuild. You'll just delete them and make them pay their price for doing so. Now we're going to do a quick mention here on the Archon Shards because I'm a little late into the script and I can't be bothered to go back and edit it, but she really benefits from the Red Crimson Shards more than any of the others available. And as you can see here, I have five strength ones, but personally, I would switch these out for five duration ones instead. See, she does so much damage and I was already hitting 16 million before adding these in. So I think the quality of life would actually be better and help my Shroud of Diner and other duration related abilities more instead than adding strength. So guys, that about does it. A cheeky don't blink build, because if you do, you won't see her coming. And you also won't be able to read all of the damage numbers that you just pumped out on your screen. What do you guys think about Varuna? Do you guys think she's insane, like an S tier frame? Or do you think she's just another mid pack frame? Let me know your thoughts. But as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please go ahead and leave a like or share the video with a friend who's also looking for a build. And subscribe to the channel if you're new. But I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video.